Hello viewers, here's a set of Panasonic cordless telephones. This is model KX-TG6641. Let's get a good view of the information on here. If I recall correctly, this was a pretty expensive high-end model back in the day when it came out. And although it doesn't have Bluetooth, which a lot of the newer Panasonic phones do, the technology really hasn't changed because this is 6 Plus and there hasn't been anything released since then. And there very, very well may never be another technology released for uh, cordless telephones. Anyways, that's a whole different discussion. So this was the last set that needs to be recorded from that auction that I bought of the Panasonic 900 megahertz analog phone and the, at least I think it's analog anyways, and the Uniden uh, 46 to 49 HQ series extender phone. Both of those were kind of a little bit of a bust. Hopefully this one is going to make up for it. I believe these are all fully functional. It did come with two range extenders. I don't really have a good way to test those for functionality other than plugging them in and turning them on and watching the lights go to the correct color. And they did do that, so I believe they're working okay. Um, I'm not really sure. I guess what I could do is put the base in the bottom corner of the basement and then go upstairs with an extender and walk around outside and see how far it goes. Because um, the extender would make a big difference in that case. So maybe I'll do that someday, but... It's not going to be today and it's not going to be tomorrow either. So anyways, uh, let's get into the telephones themselves here. They don't have a clip, unfortunately. They didn't come with those. Um, and there is uh, some button issues here. Arguably very severe button issues. So we're going to have to get that fixed. Um very long battery covers and these batteries are labeled February 2012 and I don't believe that this set is older than that so that these may be the original batteries in here I don't think these have any kind of a date to it on them yeah let me see one here made in Malaysia interestingly enough not made in China oh there's Chinese up there uh, perhaps there's a, a date code embedded in that serial number somewhere. I don't know. So, um, let's set the date and time here because that's going to annoy me. Actually, you know what? We'll just ring it up. That should set the date and time. I don't know what the ringers are set as or anything, so let's just see what happens. Okay, do we have a bust here too? What the heck? Oh, it's not switched up correctly. That was user error. Alright, so it looks like they're all in the default ring. Talking caller ID. At least it's not an engaged, anyways. And this is the base speaker phone. Testing, testing, one, two, three. That appears to be working. got a good volume range to it at least um, although it could go a little bit louder especially for a bass unit but that seems to work and all these buttons seem to work pretty well in here too 
yeah, those are all good. All right, let's. Uh, I'm just gonna do one handset on video. So the buttons work; they're just not nearly as sensitive as they should be. So I'm gonna go ahead and dial out in here and call uh, call myself. Testing, testing, one, two, three. That's working. Speaker phone test, one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. Testing, testing. Talk mode, testing, testing. All right, that seems to be working. Let's see if we can get some talking caller ID on here. Mm, initial setting, talk caller ID, there's handset on, and base unit on. And now just for the fun of it, let's program something dumb into the, into the thing here. Only 50 entries? That's disappointing. And we're already down to half battery, so these batteries can't be that good. In fact, I'd go as far as to say they're pretty worthless. And it's saying 12 a.m. because that's the time that the... Um, CEO simulator was plugged in. It, it starts at 12 o'clock every time I plug it in. Now this actually could go either way. This is kind of neat. Alright, let's go ahead and call it up again. Listen to it say something stupid. What if that song is copyrighted? I better change it just in case it is. I'll just leave it there for now. Alright, let's check out the answering machine. It's got no messages in it. I don't know if there's a greeting in here or not. Hello, this is Rick. Thanks for calling. I can't come to the phone right now. Please leave a message. I'll call you as soon as possible. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm going to delete Rick out of there. Sounds like the older voice. Record greeting after the beep. This is the test greeting. Record a message or I won't call you back. Goodbye. This is a test greeting. Record a message or I won't call you back. Goodbye. Okay, oh, I shouldn't have closed out of there. I want to change the uh, ring time. Let's go down to three just for the video. And make sure this is on. That's fine. I don't want screen call. Okay. Answer. 
Sensor off. Answer set. Tuesday, 12.27 a.m. Yeah, it's got the older voice. That's interesting. still screening and why didn't it switch over to this telephone unless it screens per handset no we gotta call it again somewhere. It's not on this handset. And it's not on this handset. It's on this handset. So it screens through each handset, which is kind of cool. That's a lot more useful than just the call screening on the base. But honestly, I find call screening in general kind of useless because the only purpose in my mind of an answering machine is if you're not home. Go ahead and get a message playback here. Two new messages. Testing, testing, why is it still? Tuesday, 12, 29 a.m. Okay, now where is it screening from? Okay, it's screening somewhere. It's not on this handset. So it's a fairly average quality answering machine. I wouldn't say it's great, but it's not terrible either. So those seems to work, at least the handset that was tested in the base. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.